Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guests as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity Podcast. Hello and welcome to Create Clarity with Charity. I am so excited to have the CEO and founder of Arizona Filmmakers and Moneta Design here, Mr. David Navarrete. Hi, David. Hi, how's it going? Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I know your schedule is so busy and you have so many big things on your schedule, all these great events and um, productions you have going on here in Arizona. So I am honored to have you here and that you made time for me and my audience. So thank you. Um, thank you. And let's let's talk about you because that's what this, this uh, third season is about, is really getting to know you as the authentic creative along with being the CEO and founder of an amazing company. So yeah. I love your story. It's so authentic. It's, it resonates with so many people um, being that, you know, it just didn't land in your lap, right? This mm-hmm. this great opportunity that you've created for people to tell their stories and to be seen and have digital assets. So let's go back um, because we want to hear about the entrepreneur. Some people say they're born. Some some say, you know, they're made, right? Yeah. Um, but yours was a little different. So let's go back. Like I asked you, I think when we chatted before about, you know, if you had that drive, that that passion when you were younger. And um, it was really interesting how it's evolved. So let's hear it. Yeah. So as far as like, you know, being born an entrepreneur, I don't know if I would say that, but I definitely was born with passion. Mm-hmm. And, but I didn't know what that passion was going to be. So I I was one of those who, you know, kind of grew up with a little bit of depression. I wasn't very full of life. And I noticed that at a young age, mm-hmm. I, I actually wanted to just join the military when people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I wanted to join the military just to, you know, go out to war and maybe die an honorable death. That's mm-hmm. as far as I could think for my future. I wasn't full of life. Mm-hmm. Um try to be recruited by the military. They didn't accept me for numerous reasons. And so I thought, okay, what do I do now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was, I was stuck. Um, yes. And yeah. you came from a military family. So that just seemed like natural for you mm-hmm. to progress into military lifestyle. That's what you knew, but it wasn't fulfilling for you. It wasn't like you were so excited and, and it was kind of just maybe an easy way out. Right. Yeah, that, it was definitely that easy way out. So I said, OK, I'm smart enough. Uh, I If I dedicate myself to something, I know I could do it. I said, I'm going to be a doctor and I'm ambitious. So I'm like, if I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a neurosurgeon. Wow. So I went from not caring to C's and D's to starting to get A's and B's all the way up to uh, when I finished my bachelor's in biology. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I started shadowing a few doctors, started going around getting to know the industry, I noticed that the reasons why I was getting into it, which is helping people and uh, learning about science, you were not actually doing that as a doctor. You were at the mercy of the insurance telling you who you were able to care for and who you're not. And yes. with, you know, with that depression already, I knew that if I go into hundreds more in debt, I'm not going to be happy, uh, you know down the road hundreds of thousands you mean hundreds yeah yeah hundreds (laughs) of thousands I was already thirty thousand dollars in bed just for my bachelor's so Mm -hmm. uh, I had to make a shift I I didn't know what I wanted to do but I knew that I couldn't be a doctor anymore yeah and so that was already after getting your bachelor's in biology so what can you do right with a a degree in biology Uh, that really the only choice is to go into med school or yeah 
get a BSN or, you know, something that has to do with medical. Right. But that wasn't really sparking your fire either. And then like the insurance companies and just the bureaucracy of the entire healthcare system was just so disappointing. You're like, I got to make this decision. And so let's talk about that shift because a lot of us might sit on that for 10 or 15 years and never actually take the leap because you already had so much time and energy invested in that career. And, you know, you, you had your family on your team, your wife, your parents, everyone's like, yeah, David, you know, yeah. let we, we can't wait till you're a doctor and you're just not feeling it. Right. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, it's a scary yeah. feeling. It's a scary feeling because you had so much, like I had so much pressure from my family to my parents who were supporting me and my wife and my son at the time until mm-hmm. I was able to graduate and uh, everyone just cheering on, like supporting me. You're going to be a doctor. I have faith in you. Like I'm very excited for w- your future. And then having to tell them like, no, this isn't for me. Sorry that not only did I waste my time, my money, but I'm also wasting your time and money. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um and out of that depression, I just needed to find a, an outlet, which was something creative for me. And that was videography. Awesome. Uh, so you tapped into your creative. Mm-hmm. That's the evolutionary entrepreneur, right? If we could just really live our life by monetizing our creative, yeah, this whole world would be a different place, right? Yeah. Because th- that's when you sparked this idea of taking film to a personal level right Mm -hmm. and helping people kind of brand their stories as a hobby that's how it started it was a hobby yeah I bought my camera which was it was a Nikon D7000 which was not a film camera at all I was showing up to events with this little photography camera people were saying you call yourself a videographer with that (laughs) and, <laughs> I was like, I, I use my say. cell phone. They're like, what? Well, no, what are you yeah. doing? My no, podcast I... is on Zoom. No, don't do that. <laughs> but I no, found but... when you go against the, the grain and you do a lot of things that people say, no, that's not how you should do it. You actually are way more successful because yes. you did it differently. You found an angle um, that had nothing to do with what brand of camera you are using. Yeah, I actually, I would basically say, oh, you'll see. And then I would go home knowing that my footage was trash. I would say my style is like this vintage VHS style. So I would overlay like a VHS and make it seem like it was purpose. Like the uh-huh. footage is bad because we're doing that. And yeah. for the time, people loved it. People were like, oh, I love this retro look. And I was like, well, I couldn't do anything else because my camera wasn't good. <laughs> That's awesome. See, you used what you had and you mm-hmm. made history. Yeah. So you can completely change the entire trajectory of your future by yeah. that one instant. And I think you said there was like an aha moment, um, you know, where you were at that place and, and you were like, I just can't do another lab and go through another year of school. And you were like binge watching like Spielberg or something. Let's yeah. talk about that. Cause that was literally probably one of your mentors because books and TV shows can be mentors too, even though it wasn't like a direct thing, but I love how that impacted you. So let's talk about that moment. Yeah. So last year of, of pre-med, I was getting into video a lot and my parents were like, Oh, that's a nice hobby. I would tell them, hint at them that, Hey, I have this cool idea for a video and it's going to take like three months. And uh, they're like, I don't want to hear about it. How about school? How school? What what schools are you applying to? And I was like, oh, man, like this is tough. So mm-hmm. for a good six months before I graduated, I was I had this knot, you know, in my throat, in my heart. I was feeling like, how do I do this? Like I need to change something. Um, so during those six months, I think I watched so many videos on YouTube about directors or something trying to find a sign that told me, hey, I should just switch medical to to film. And I watched this uh, Steven Spielberg speech and he was saying uh, he had the same problem. This great director, filmmaker that wasn't sure if he should be a filmmaker. And what he said is that if you listen to this little voice in your head when everything's quiet and the voice that remains is the one that's telling you where you should be, And if it weren't for that little voice in his head, he wouldn't be there speaking to all those students at the assembly. So I was like, 
That's, that's true. I need to listen to that little voice and whatever that voice says tomorrow morning, I'm going to go tell everybody that's the decision I made. So I slept. Oh my gosh, I'm getting chill. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Um, So I slept on it. I started listening to that little voice and I could not stop thinking about movies and making these wonderful films and captivating audiences. Like that's what I kept thinking about. So next day I told everybody I think I'm going to switch this stuff, the the career. I'm going to finish my bachelor's, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue it. Mm, That's amazing. And it wasn't the popular vote. So it was not. And you knew that was coming and that, that, that feeling in your throat and in your gut and your heart, that tightness of not being able to do what you felt inside was right for you and to please everyone else. Cause I, I was a parent pleaser, people pleaser for so many years. I just wanted to have everyone's approval. Right. And like, just fit in the box where everyone thought I belonged. Um, but when you jump out, were you like, so liberated Were you, did you feel like something ignite inside you? No, if it, honestly, it felt worse. It felt oh, like no. I, needed to, I needed to overcompensate. I felt like such a failure now that I admitted oh. to it. So mm-hmm. I, I actually took on three jobs. Uh, my, my schedule after I decided not to go to medical school, because now I had to provide for my family. Like I didn't have any support. So what I did was I worked, uh, I worked at a UPS. So from 3 a.m. to 11 a.m., uh, 11 a.m. I was working at uh, UPS. Then I would wait. Uh, after that, I would go door door sales sprint, and then after that, I would go to BJ's to go work. You know the restaurant. Oh wow! And, get, yeah. get a, and then on my free time, think about how I'm going to grow my business, Moneta Design. So for three years, I was doing that slowly, chipping away at each job. Like, okay, I got enough income from Moneta Design. I can leave this job and this job. I, I probably didn't have to go that crazy, but I felt like I had to because I felt like a failure. Um, yeah. The negative I, self-talk, right, is a big heavy hitter. And when you're stressed and you're not getting enough sleep, it's like a tornado inside you, right? And that was what you were saying, the 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 lack of self-confidence and the you know negative self-talk. So let's get into that because that's probably like the majority of people that finally like jump and like go against the grain and they, they do what they feel, you know, we're really faced with failure and, um, having people turn their back on us. Right. And then, and then also then beating ourselves up because it, you know, it takes a toll when, when you don't have that support anymore and you're, you're like kind of a one man army. Right. So let's talk about that. How, so you were working your tail off and building your own business. So -hmm. you didn't give up on the dream and you were working that hard specifically to grow your business, but it was tearing you up inside. Yeah. Right. I would, my family, my wife, my wife's family is night owls. So during the time that I had to start going to bed to be able to go to my job in the morning at 3 a.m., they're, down here partying to have a good time and I was just going crazy like I would sometimes it, it, it got so bad to where I was putting myself in the closet trying to like cover my ears and just like spiral by myself mm. um, but I want to talk about the two things that got me through it and why I think I, I was able to pursue this and not give up yes. and and the, number one is that um, I wasn't scared to try things. I wasn't scared to to do anything it took to see it succeed because I had because with my background in science, I had a healthy relationship with failure. Mm-hmm. As a scientist, all you do is fail, fail, fail till you figure out what the answer is, and that's mm-hmm. what science is. It's testing the the scientific method and seeing if your hypothesis is is um, is a failure or not. And mm-hmm. so what I did was like, okay, let me try to fail this way. That didn't work. Okay, cool. More data for my for myself. Let's fail again. Let's fail again. So with that healthy failure uh, relationship with failure, I was able to do more than a lot of people were were scared to do. Mm-hmm. Number two, I love that. That's yeah. so true. Mm-hmm. And number two is that the passion I had after each project was done just pushed me to do way more the next time. 
Like mm -hmm. I was, I did this amazing video and I wasn't done. I was like, I need to figure out how to do more, do this, implement this, just do a lot more on my next project. My mm -hmm. clients, my clients who, who I worked with in the past probably won't like me saying this, but I experimented with their projects every single time on the next and the next. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to pull this off, but I'm mm -hmm. going to try it and see if it works. And luckily I was creative enough to make it work, but. I you know, love that. That is so awesome because yeah. it is, it's like a science project. Being an entrepreneur is like an experiment every time you start a new business, <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, and then the fear drives us, the passion and the fire of, you know, possibly fearing that is the do or die, right? Dog eat dog. It's like, you know, that's the fire that burns so hot to keep us going. It's the challenge of possibly yeah. failing. Like that's the fun part, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's what you want to be at. No. Um, it's like jumping yeah. out of airplane every time. You never know if the chute's going to open, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And you just um, got to have that passion to want to keep going. Like that's, that's. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of times, so let's get into that. Cause you know, the, the Create Clarity with Charity podcast is about mentors and coaches. And, and I remember like at some of my old time failure lows where, you know, I closed my restaurants or moved to a different city and had to find new clients and no one's biting. And then you're just like all the time, there's just constant no's, not enough yeses and barely making the ends meet. You know, there's like this feeling of not being good enough and yeah. not having enough credentials and never, you know, all that stuff. So did you reach out to like coaches and mentors that kind of steer you out of that? Yeah. So I knew that I had to grow this business. Like when it came to quality and creativity for the services that I was providing, mm -hmm. I was I would say one of the tops, like I, I love what I'm doing. People love what I was creating, but when it came to business, I didn't have the confidence and I didn't have that mental well-being to charge and to say with confidence, this is what you need. Um, and so I thought, okay, maybe I need a business coach. So I, I hired a business coach and I noticed that I wasn't doing what he was saying. He was like, Hey, this is how you grow this, your sales uh, strategy. This is what you should do. And then I would meet with him the following meeting and I would, I did nothing. And I was like, why am I like this? Like, why, why am I failing? I felt more like a failure working with a, a, a coach than not. So. And that happens too. No one talks about it. So yeah. that's so key to really go like get into that place because they will trigger you to feel uh, yeah. you know, if you don't follow through, right. Cause it is about follow through taking action. Coaching is, you know, here you are now, here's your desired state. Here's the gap. Now you push your way up the mountain. Right. But if mm. you're like, I'm just not feeling this, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so that's cool. So you, you didn't enjoy your first experience with your business coach or it wasn't as effective as it could have been. Or Yeah. And, and at first I was thinking, why, like, why is it not working? He, he actually told me, he sat down and he said, Hey, um, just my opinion, maybe, maybe you're not cut out to be an entrepreneur. Maybe you should find a job. Um, he said, if you still want to be, become an entrepreneur, I'm by your side all the way, but this is my personal opinion. Maybe you should start finding jobs. And, and, oh just my God. and I was like, I, me in this vulnerable state thinking maybe he's right. Maybe oh, I'm not, right. maybe I'm not meant to build an empire. Like I want to, you know, um, mm -hmm. but so what did you do? I thought about it. I actually did interview for a few jobs, uh, people that I've met. I was like, hey, do you guys need a quality, you know, person on your team? And and uh, one of my friends said, hey, man, like your stuff is so good. We would love you on there, but I think you have it in you. And that was like, OK, you know, I, I get it. But then uh, my dad, who at first didn't want to hear about this, he was actually really proud of me and um who doesn't express that kind of emotion that often, mm -hmm. but he was like, no, no, you shouldn't give up. Like, that's ridiculous. Never give up. He's one of those people who came from like dirt poor to now a colonel in the military and retired in Italy. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. He's like, don't ever give up. You got this. If this is something you want, you mm -hmm. don't give up. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. So see, they, they started respecting 
respecting mm-hmm. you for making those decisions for yourself and valuing what you were doing, yeah. even when everyone else was, you know, thinking you should just get a regular job. Right. So yeah. it's like, yeah. Good job for dad to come through when you really needed it. Cause that, that is really inspirational. So that's cool. So you, you kind of just reignited the fire and just kept going one foot in front of the other mm-hmm. and started building your legacy. Right. And yeah, I, is that when the community group popped out or was, was that yeah, so- later? It, it was it was a little before. So I had the the community, this community, Arizona filmmakers uh, earlier than that. I knew that my connections in the industry are crucial, just like I was shadowing a few doctors and getting to know people. I was like, I need to get to know filmmakers, too, now that I'm going to be in this industry. But when I would reach out, not a lot of not a lot of people would reach back out. Um, they would post on their stories. If you guys want to be mentored by me or you guys want to meet me, DM me, I would DM no response or that would be kind of dry. And I'm like, man, I would post stuff on Facebook groups trying to, you know, show my work or, and it would be responded Crickets. with negativity and saying like, oh. oh yeah, it was, it was very, it, it was very negative in the community. So I waited to see if there was a community that I can tap into. There wasn't. And I, two years later, after branding this out, it took me almost two years to figure out what the brand was going to be and the strategies that I want to do. After two years, I said, I'm done waiting. I'm going to create it myself while still building this. I was like, my past has prepared me to manage two things at once. So I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, three months after starting Arizona Filmmakers, we had our first event and 260 plus people showed up. And oh, wow. I was like blown away. I was like, this is, wow. That's so awesome. So I love that never give up, you know, fight or flight kind of just kept that like push going and then you know had had this community that people just value and love to be part of because you guys do it like Hollywood style it's so amazing and that's going to that it makes me want to you know pull up uh your awesome page actually this your your um Instagram I I loved your last event, um, you know, show it off because the work that you do. Oh, this is your, your YouTube. YouTube yeah. Um, I think you're, you're, you, yeah. Rhythm and reels. That was that the, is. that was That's the event, that. right? Yeah. That was the last event. Yeah. And Frankie J was there and you had all these amazing guests and red carpet layout. So that, I mean, you really do like super high vibe, um, events so we all appreciate and value that because it gives us a place to kind of feel like celebrity style right yeah yeah, um and then also get like celebrity style content which isn't very often I mean you might get one like photo or something with a nice Mm -hmm. camera at an event but like a whole reel and like all the cuts and edits you did were so cool so you started the community you started getting a great following did your book of business just blow up when you finally decided to shut off the negativity and give yourself a break or how did that all happen? Yeah. So after meeting with the life, with the business coach, I went back to the drawing board and said, what am I missing? You know? And I noticed that all my problems came from my self negative talk, all the, all the things I was putting in my brain. So I said, I need to talk to a life coach. I started working with a life coach and they just broke it down to me why am i thinking this way and what are the problems what are the things that i'm need to fix after that i i blew up i had i felt like there was no limitations to what i could do awesome awesome so you ditched the heaviness right and gave and was like okay i choose me now and the power of my thoughts i can manifest everything i've been working hard yeah. for right Um, Because a lot of entrepreneurs, especially coaches and, you know, creatives, we've have a sense of, you know, not being enough or, you Mm -hmm. know, an imposter, right? That imposter syndrome is something that is really hard to shake. Did your life coach take you through like a journey? Was there like one shift that you just noticed and you felt lighter and then all of a sudden your entire life changed after that? Yeah. Um, well, there wasn't one thing. It was like a lot of work, you know, all the, all these years since I was young, self-negative talk 
and I had to backtrack all those years and then start fresh, which I'm still, I still feel like I'm almost to that zero point. Um, but just realizing that I am good enough and all the things I've been able to accomplish and who I am. Uh, the other thing was like, don't base your value off of your success or what the work you do base the value on who you are as a person. And I think I'm an incredible person um, giving and I'm all these things, you know, just sh showing gratitude for the, who you truly are authentically mm -hmm. uh, because I, I was going through phases, you know, like, okay, I'm not, I'm, I am worthy because look at all everything I've created. And then I put pay, base my value on what I create. So now I'm creating constantly just to be worthy. Then I had to shift that to, I am worthy because who I am. And then now naturally things start to become. You tapped into your authenticity because mm -hmm. we can lie to ourselves for a long time and believe our own BS. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then when you go through that process of self-realization, you do realize maybe I believed it, but it was like a forced belief that I just kind of ingrained and programmed into myself. But I really know I'm not like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I love that. That's a huge shift. So that helps you be the authentic you. And now you bring that to your clients. Exactly. So let's talk about that because that's really what you're known for. And the amazing thing about this is now you help people bring their best story to life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Their authentic self so, stepping into the light. Uh, so yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. So with Moneta Design, which is my branding media agency, where we focus on video, what I realized is that a lot of people, number one, have a, a different concept of branding, which now with the internet and everything, I think they're understanding what branding is, which is a feeling, but people aren't consistent with that feeling or with that branding. So what you have to do is be authentic with your true self so that that shows with everything, with every touch point of your business. And when I talk to my clients, I pull that authenticity out so that we can get down to what their brand really is and how it can connect with their audience even, even more than what it already is. So, yes. so that, that's basically what I do. I take clients on a vision extraction meeting to see what stories we're going to be telling with their videos. And in that process, I now working with the life coach and everything that I've learned on how to tell stories, I have clients leaving that vision extraction meeting crying saying wow i i didn't realize all this stuff that i i was holding on to or i didn't know who my authentic self was and i'm happy to show that now to the world through these amazing stories i love that cuz that's the thing that's a lot of reasons why people feel uncomfortable on camera is cuz they haven't tapped in their true authenticity and it will show and sometimes you know, being able to have a great story curated by someone like you to polish that self-belief and confidence and, and give them an opportunity to reevaluate who they are yeah. from an outside perspective. Because it's different looking at yourself on camera, right? On video. Yeah, yeah exactly. And and the other thing is that some, some clients, which a lot of education, I feel like I'm doing something that not a lot of people are doing, which is curating these stories for business owners. And a lot of people think, oh yeah, like just come over, record, I have the story ready. And most of the time early on in, in our business, we noticed that people were just telling, you know, that saying that says stories sell and facts tell or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, people were like, I have a great story. I diversity, I've overcome all these things. And then when I press record, they're like, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And that's yep, how it, it comes out. out. And I'm like, that's not a, that's not a story. You're just <laughs> telling me things like a story is like, you, there's a, there's a formula to stories and people don't know that. And they think because they have a great events that are happening in their life, that's a story, but no, a story is the way you take your audience on a journey. Uh, and that's something that we've formulated for our clients. I love that. And that's the cool thing, audience, because you're still here. This is resonating with you. And you know, right now, self-branding and being able to be your brand 
be your own business, like name image likeness, a lot of the athletes now have the opportunity to have their story, have themselves featured, have VSL, you know, funnels and coaches and people are using their own name, their own stories to create legacy and wealth. So tell me like what the best offer for my audience is right now to be able to get in touch with you and what you can offer them to have their authentic story crafted by you. Yeah, I would recommend a story brand video about yourself or about your business, which uh, if you reach out, that will come with a story framework for your business or your personal brand, script writing with our script writers, uh, a day shoot, high production uh, shoot, and the edited video. And you'll get a, a video that I promise you will influence your audience like no other. I love it. So if you guys got that, you can have your in, in the amazing studio if you're local studio. here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Do you do any virtual recording, storyboarding stuff? Um, I, I like to be in there, you know. In so, the studio. So, yeah, because the lighting yeah. and the tools and all that. We can come to yeah. you for sure. If you have a nice location, we can come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll bring all the production gear and everything, all the cameras to you. Uh, but we have so much flexibility with this community, anything, yes. anything you can imagine, we could probably provide. Awesome. So you heard that here, you guys reach out to David, Arizona filmmakers to get, you know, your value videos, your story videos, you know, to, to have your brand polished and, um, studio quality, Hollywood starts Hollywood quality, right. Video production yes. set, um, and also the super fun and awesome events that he throws through Arizona filmmakers. And do you have one coming up? I think the icon something, is that your event? Um, the icon event? No, that's a different one, but we, we do, since we're very community based, we have a lot of community events that are happening that we promote. Our next one is probably gonna be in November. So look, watch out for November. We're gonna have a big red carpet event again. Um, awesome yeah awesome so any last words to live by i would say you know don't underestimate this power of stories the best way to get a message across is through stories and the best way to tell a story is through video yes well thank you so much david i hope audience you go visit arizona filmmakers on instagram DM him. That's how you can get a hold of him to get your story um, and your videos message on, on Insta, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, you guys have an amazing day. Once again, David, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And we'll be chatting soon. Ciao.